Cooking Apa. Hi, this is Cooking Apa. Today you probably have guessed by looking at the ingredients here. Apa is going to make Ngoh Hiang Five Spice um, Meat Roll. Okay, so every Chinese New Year, Apa will definitely want make one video of this. Recently, Apa made one video, but I made a lot of mistakes. Actually, I'm still thinking whether I want to publish that video or not. Probably. Uh, I did point out all those mistakes in those media. Probably it's still good to publish our consider later. Okay, anyway, uh, what you have here, um, this, this dish will really take some time. <laughs> hours, it will take hours to make. Basically, it will involve some marinade time. Now, I have about 400 grams of uh, minced pork here. Okay, you can also use minced chicken if you don't take uh, pork. And also, um, I will mix about 10-20% of fat when I buy this from the butcher. So about 400 grams of uh, minced pork. And then we have this, the fu pi, yeah, the bean curd sheet. Bean curd sheet, not easy to get it actually during, uh, especially during Chinese New Year. There are two types of bean curd sheet. The first type is salted, second type is this one which is plain. I prefer the plain one because the salted is really very salty, you need to wipe out the salt. Uh, so just be careful. How do you know? Ask the seller, right? Then we're going to, uh, all this is, will go into the meat paste. Um, I have approximately, I have some, uh, maybe, I don't know how much. <laughs> this is about half a carrot, chopped. Uh, this is water chestnut. I buy the ready peeled ones, so it's much easier. If you buy the fresh one, also can. Uh, just make sure when you buy, when you choose the water chestnut, make sure it is still very hard. If it's softened, then no good already. Make sure you press it, yeah? So this is approximately three uh, water, two to three water chestnut chop. This is very important. I know many of you doesn't eat uh, uh, fresh coriander, but it is really a must if you really want to get the, the authentic classic flavor right to add fresh coriander inside. You won't be able to taste it, but it's going to taste so much more authentic. Don't skip this, seriously. My wife doesn't eat fresh coriander, but when I added this into the uh, into the ngoh hiang, she still loves it. Yeah, she still loves it. So don't skip the fresh coriander and uh, don't forget to uh, chop it. This is approximately uh, two tablespoon. Then I have two tablespoon of chopped garlic, two tablespoon of chopped ginger, two tablespoon of chopped shallot. This is one teaspoon of five spice powder. Then we will also need some um, some sauce or uh, seasoning for the minced pork, some light soy sauce, saoxing wine, this is uh, white pepper, sugar, cornstarch, and also uh, this is the rock salt. Remember to click subscribe and notification button for more Abbas video. Let's start making the meat paste. Shallot, ginger, garlic, fine spice powder. Try to cut it, chop it in uh, as fine as possible. Carrot, water chestnut, and also fresh coriander. Very important, the fresh coriander. I want to remind you again. Then I'm going to give it one round of light soya sauce. Some saoxing wine. Let me just go for you a bit. Some saoxing wine. Of course, if you don't take alcohol, you just omit the wine, the alcohol part, yeah? Give it a bit more. So it's about one small cup. Few pedestrians of white pepper. Now this particular white pepper also is already seasoned with some salt, so you want to be careful of on the amount of salt later. Some sugar. This is the rock salt. Spit. Don't I don't mind. Uh, under season your meat paste because later people can eat it with some uh, chili dip. Don't over season it. Okay, and then we have some cornstarch. Alright. And we have an egg here. 
Uh, don't put the whole egg immediately. You don't want your paste to be too watery. You can actually put it in stages. I'll probably put half first. I will add more if necessary. So what you do next is to mix everything up very evenly. And there is one action you need to do, which is to... Wait, yeah, let me mix up first. Oh, actually there's one more thing you can put to enhance the flavor. Either sesame oil, or I have some garlic oil with me, so I'm going to put in some garlic oil. You can also use sesame oil, yeah? This will be super fragrant. So, do this, go in one direction, clockwise, and uh, stir it until everything is nicely mixed together, and until you really feel something, you feel the traction, meaning something is actually stopping you from, from uh, doing this. Because you want to create the gelatinous from the meat paste itself. It making a uh, meaning to make the meat paste very sticky. Why you want to make it sticky so that it will be very firm, staying inside your meat roll later. You don't want it to be very soft, so your if not your meat paste will not be very firm later. Yeah, wow, it's quite dry actually because I have a lot of a bit more ingredient here. I think I don't mind putting in the whole egg. Remember, don't make it too watery. Okay, it's easier to turn right to rotate right now. So rotate until it becomes you feel the traction, then it is basically done. This is too big. Take it out. Right? This is only less than one minute. I already feel it's very heavy. <laughs> All right, so it becomes very, very sticky, yeah? You want this. So next thing you do is to wrap this with a cling wrap and put it in the fridge for at least two hours. This process, do not skip. You need to uh, let it marinate in the fridge for at least two hours to let the flavor really sink in. Very important, seriously, don't skip this. Okay, use a cling wrap. It's now nicely wrapped up and let's put it in the fridge. Why you need to wrap? Because you don't want it to become dry out in the fridge. All right, this is two hours later. Marinate the meat paste in the fridge. Congratulations, you just passed stage one. Now let's do stage two. A lot of work, right? <laughs> okay, take out the clingy wrap. Put aside. So, um, you're going to wrap it. So first thing first, what you're going to do with your the wrap, the bean curd. Now, uh, what you need to know is usually the bean curd sheet will come in uh, a combination of F, uh, four air four sizes, four air four sizes. All right. So I will actually um, flip them into equal shapes uh, to about eight pieces. It's it's really up to you how big you want it to be. You choose yourself. Okay. I I make it. I divide it into eight pieces, use a scissor to cut it into equal sizes. And what you need um, is standby a bit of water at the side, a bit of corn starch solution, one tablespoon to help you to have equal uh, uh, size of the fillings. And uh, yeah, make sure your hand is very clean yeah wash your hand what you do here is uh, let's first of all to ease the wrapping process the first thing you can do is you can actually put your put some water on top to make it soften so it's become much easier to um, to, to roll 
if the one you buy is a salted one then you need to use a wet cloth to very lightly wipe away the salt if not it's going to be very salty this one is plain tight so i don't need to do that i only need to use some water on put on top so um, use this use a tablespoon to roughly uh, do some measurement here about three big tablespoon minimum and the thing about wrapping this is you want it to be uh, you want it to be as tight as possible okay uh, probably let me zoom in for you hold on uh. I hope this is better let me zoom in for you now okay wrap it tight make it as tight as possible and even as as even as possible as in uh, similar thickness throughout yeah turn one round turn one round and then flip inside on the left hand side don't flip the other side first turn one round again Keep on making it as tight as possible, very gently. Now, you can flip in the other side and continue to turn two round. Done. It's not very difficult, isn't it? And then you can actually get ready a small knife to uh, remove the extra bin sheet, bin cut sheet and you can put a little bit of uh, cornstarch here to help to stick it nicely right something like this and then put it at the side set it aside just be careful when you set it aside together with uh, the rest of the rest of the ngoh hiang don't put them very near keep some space because they can stick to each other yeah okay you should be having at least eight uh, with the amount that you have um, i still have a little bit of uh, meat paste left i'm going to make it into a meatball later for my daughter and this this is actually the last one slightly smaller because part of the bean curd sheet has already uh, dried out because that bean curd sheet, I actually put it in the fridge for more than one week. I'm so surprised that it can last uh, until today. Um, because I was told by the seller that it can only last for about three days. After three days, it will dry out and you can just use it to uh, make a dessert out of it. Okay, but anyhow, I still managed to use it for today. So let's start with the uh, third stage, which is steaming. All right, now... Uh, prepare one um, steaming uh, boiling pot of uh, hot water here and notice I actually um, put a plate first then I put one layer or something like this or you, it can be those uh, uh, or you can use those that's used to steam pao also can or you can use uh, the, the grill uh, steel, steel grill ones also can anything that can actually raise the uh, ngoh hiang slightly higher why because you don't want two two reason the first reason is you don't want your ngo hyang to stick to each other okay second reason to stick to the bottom sorry you don't want the ngo hyang to stick to the bottom of your plate that's number one number two you don't want your ngo hyang to uh to gonna to 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 gonna with the the humid the humidity that actually accumulate inside the plate and it will become actually softer actually it still can be eaten no problem but it doesn't look as good that's all yeah so once the steam started to release you can slowly oh, be careful of the steam still okay it's still hot huh? be very delicate and careful <laughs> uh, and don't be too greedy i'm going to steam four at a time like i said it will it can actually stick quite easily together 
steam this for approximately 10 to 12 minutes 10 to 12 minutes under medium uh, medium high heat we will come back shortly okay this is about approximately 11 or 12 minutes ah see it still can uh, get stick to each other a little bit <laughs> Next time, to put a bit even slightly wider, or maybe I should use a steel one so that it can actually more it is actually more flattened. This one because it's quite soft. Yeah, I, I have another one which is steel. Maybe I try that for the rear, the other four. So now you can actually off the fire. Wait after the steam uh, went off and very carefully uh, take out the uh, mohyang. Let me finish with the. Take this out and finish with the, the other four. So I have taken out the whole thing, put it aside to let it uh, cool down a little bit, and put in the new one, which is this. So you can also use something like this. Yeah, I think I got this from DIY maybe. Put it on top of the plate. Very gently put it in. This is better, I think. This is better. This one guarantee won't stick to each other. Okay. Of course, I'm going to steam this for another 10 12 minutes also. Yep. Alright, this after another about 11 12 minutes. Wow. I think this X, this, uh, this grill here actually acts better than uh, the wooden one because uh, it doesn't really stick much and it managed to re really manage to raise um, the bungo hyang as you can see uh, without touching the humidity at uh, the bottom yeah uh, in the plate yeah so um, this is actually nicer go and buy this from diy <laughs> just off the fire and carefully take it out i let you compare the two again between the two this one definitely turns out to be much better this one a little bit wet at the bottom okay so go and buy this one <laughs> right so before you want to uh, fry uh, if you i would normally make a, a lot more than what i really needed so that i can actually keep in the fridge so what you do is after you steam uh, the ngo hyang let it cool down then you can actually keep it inside the freezer yeah it's freezer yeah uh, you can keep it easily for a couple of weeks no problem only when you want to eat it then you can take it out and uh, uh, deep fry it. then you can eat ready so you must steam first then only you keep in the freezer and the thing the thing is this the skin will still when you put in the freezer the skin can actually still stick very easily quite uh, uh, easily in the in the freezer what you need to do is to uh, probably get a a paper or something maybe baking paper to separate them so that it won't stick when you keep in the fridge so use medium low heat to slowly deep fry don't use too high heat you can go black very easily and this is already cooked so what you really want in this final process finally final stage this is stage four is it final stage it is just to uh, give the outer layer a crispy surface You don't need very hot oil. You just want to uh, make the surface brownish, that's all. Very slowly pan fry this for a couple of minutes, then it's basically done. It should be deep fried, not pan fried. The moment you start seeing the outer layer become crispy and brownish, you can actually take it out. Just get ready uh, oil absorbing paper at the side. And you can now take it out. And let it cool down before you cut them. All right, finally it's done. Um, I hope you really like this video. <laughs> 
because this uh, I, I don't like to make Mohia very often because it's so much of work now uh, that's why I only make it during Chinese New Year now if you like my video do share my video on your Facebook to your friends come to Cooking Appa Facebook fan page to click like and follow button follow up on Instagram and subscribe to Cooking Appa YouTube channel thank you very much happy Chinese New Year to you all bye bye